to me Tell me you die for me Break it if you promise If you were honest I wouldn't be crazy If you didn't call me names You didn't try to change Every part of Every part of me You hate Hey everybody, it's George Holiday here from Made on the Road. We're here with another tutorial this week to help you make the best pop music. This week we're focusing on how to tune your vocals like a pro. Everything we're going to be talking about in this video is completely subjective. Everybody approaches music differently, so I'm hoping that what we talk about in this video you can apply to your own music in different ways, but it's important to know that the techniques and the approaches can still be the same. You just make the sound that you want to make with the starting points that we'll give today. We're going to be looking into different ways that you can tune vocals to keep them really natural sounding or if you want to go really hard and heavy on the tuning to, to give almost like a vocoder sound or if you want to land somewhere in between to make just some really tight pop music. Hopefully we'll cover all of these points for you today. Now I'm going to be using Logic Pro X in this video but the same techniques will apply to you no matter what door you're using. I'm also going to be using Waves plugins today as these are really popular but you can use whatever you want and the theory and the process is still relatively the same. If you have any questions let me know in the comments below and we will try and answer those and if you have any topic ideas, any other tutorials you want us to film, let us know in the comments below and we'll make sure that we add it to our schedule. Without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial and jump right into our door. So the clip I'm going to be using today is actually a track I'm working on at the minute with a client, um, an artist called Beth McCarthy. She is originally from the north in the UK, now based in London. She is a great example of an artist who is making pop music and tuning actually becomes part of the sound. It's not just about being in tune, it's, it's the different things that you can do with tuning that make the overall sound of pop. It makes things tighter, it makes the timing tighter, and it gives an energy to the music in the same way that like compression would or reverb or any of those kind of processing things you'd normally do to a Vocal. It is, I consider it as an effect as much as I consider it as something to tidy up tuning. So the clip I'm going to be using is different to the beginning, but it's the same part. It's an earlier chorus, um, and I'm going to just show you a clip now leading into the chorus. There's a few different things that are going on. So you're going to hear the vocal without reverb, you're going to hear it with reverb, you're going to hear it with a vocoder, and in those different scenarios, you can hear how the tuning is going to be changing those sounds. So we're then going to jump in, I'm going to solo the track, you're going to hear the vocal on its own, and you're going to hear the vocal with and without tuning dry and with all the other effects that are on it. I don't have time for this But you is making me find it Alright, so I've opened up the vocal production session. A lot of the effects you're going to hear is just basically for tracking, so really basic compression, really basic EQ and de but we're not focusing on that today, we're just literally going to be focusing on the tuning. So this is the chorus just completely raw, with nothing else on it. You is making me find it If you didn't lie to me Tell me you die for me Break every promise If you were honest I wouldn't be crazy. So what I'd usually do first, just to make sure um, whilst I'm comping um, and choosing which parts of the vocal I'm going to be using, obviously I don't want to be printing out the tuning. Now what do I mean by printing? Well, there's two different types of tuning. You have real time. So this is an example of Waves Tune real time. Um, it literally, once you set the key and once you set how quickly you want the note transition and the speed, which I'll show you an example of in a second, um, it will do it on the fly. It will do it as you go. And the other type of tuning, which is the bit we're going to delve into a little bit more because it gives you just a lot more control, is waves, waves tune. Here we go. So what I mean by printing, um, as I mentioned earlier, is that when you hit play, um, you is making me find it, it will record. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you die for me. You can see it's literally finding what notes the singer is using, and then from there you can drag those notes up and down. You can select all, choose how much tuning you have on it, which I'll go through in a minute, and tune, choose how hard you want it. So if I was just to put everything all the way up, that's going to sound like a robot. You is making me find it. <laughs> You'll have heard that in various other types of music. but So that's that type, which is the bit we're going to delve into more because you have a lot more control. Um, generally, the real-time one um, isn't as reliable if something, if there's a note that it chooses or it shifts it to, you don't have much control of being able to change it afterwards. You just have to kind of go with the flow of it and, and just hope that your singer is close enough to, to for, for the real-time to actually be able to pick up exactly what note they're meant to be singing. So this is an example of with the, the real time. It tidies things up quite nicely. Um, I generally like using this um, just as a bit of a reference point with tuning. You is making me find it 
If you didn't lie to me, tell me you die for me, we give you promise. So you can see it's just pulling things in a little bit. Um, if you actually up this, you'll hear that it tightens it up a lot more, but you're at, at risk of overtuning things and it can be quite quite obvious. Um, I personally try to tune things, even if I'm wanting it quite tune heavy, tuning heavy, um, I want to mix it generally so that you can't tell there's heavy tuning on it. Um, and it's just finding that fine line. So that's personally my approach. Um, so I think this might be a bit too heavy, but let's have a listen. You is making me find it. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise. If you were honest, I wouldn't be crazy. So it's not as heavy as I thought it would be actually. But um, on the on the me's in this section, you can kind of hear it. It, it does the robotic sound. Tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise. Tell me you'd die for me. It's that little on me. I can hear it a little bit, so I dial that back. Um, it doesn't sound bad, um, it just doesn't sound as tight um, as I think it could do if we use the other one. So generally note transition is going to be how quickly it changes between the notes. So that's the overall, uh, you get most of the robot sound from that. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise if you were honest. So note transition is going to change how quickly it changes between the notes. It's kind of obvious that bit. Um, but if you have it too high, you don't get that kind of Kanye West um, hip hop approach to the to the tuning. You actually just get a really messy sounding. Well, have a listen. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise. It doesn't sound cool. It doesn't sound intentional. It sounds more like an error. Whereas if you change the speed um, here. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise if you were honest. That one to me is more effective and sounds a bit more natural. Um, so combining those together, if you have them both, just weigh up. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise. You have uh, a sound that I mean, you've you've got to want that to be intentional to to think that that is. Um, is good tuning. <laughs> but arguably a lot of people are using tuning in songs at the moment and especially with the lo-fi kind of hip-hop sound a lot of tuned vocals um, a lot of heavy tuned vocals are in that genre so it completely depends on genre and this is this is what I mean way back in the beginning of the video it's completely subjective um, as to how you approach this. So that's generally how the the real-time tuning works and um, don't forget to like choose your key at the bottom because I mean if I put this into like natural minor and hard tune it if you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. It's so confused because Beth isn't singing notes in that scale. So uh, you want to make sure that it's in, for me, it's in A major. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. We give you promise. If you were honest, I wouldn't be crazy. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that when you have the, the, the vocals soloed like this with no effects on it, it is going to sound more harsh than it might do once you've got the effects on it. On the reverse side, once you've got compression, it's going to bring out those little details. So if it doesn't sound too tuned here, it might well do when you've added the compression and brought out all of those little details. So it'll go one of, of either way. Once you've washed it with reverb, you might not notice it as much. Um, but if you're having it dry and more compression, you might notice it more. So just keep that in mind um, at this stage that you want to keep referencing it amongst the track. Once everything else is there, you're going to hear the sound completely differently to what you're going to be hearing on its own when it's completely exposed. So, um, you know, keep keep getting the music back like this um, and just hearing. So if I overtune it a little bit. To me, that doesn't sound too too uh, tuned compared to when it's just completely on its own. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you'd die for me. It sounds quite tuned to me on its own, but when it's in the mix, it doesn't sound quite as bad. I wouldn't have it up that much anyway. Uh, but that's real time. That might work for you. I do know some people that do just stick a little bit of that lightly on it if they're not planning to tune the vocals heavily at all. And it will just keep things, you know, super in tune. It won't play around with the timings too much. Um, you barely notice it, but it just just tidy things up a little bit, really easy to do. This tuning is the one I wanna be focusing on mainly today. Um, it's, it's Waves Tune and you have a lot more control. So once it's printed out, 
and chosen all of the notes and you can see them there in front of you. You can literally hear what notes it's hitting and you can completely change things um, however you want to do it. You can even like change a note completely to a different note if you were hearing a different melody and you don't have the opportunity to be able to record it all again. So what we're gonna do for this part of the process um, is just print out the chorus first, um, get an idea of what the notes are and then we're gonna then delve in a little bit deeper into working out how quickly we want note transitions to be and how quickly we want speed to happen and then find that happy medium before um, moving on any further. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you died for me We give you promise, if you were honest I wouldn't be crazy, you didn't call me Okay, okay, so this is what I mean by printing. You can physically see the notes in front of you. You can see that that top note is a B. You can also see that she hits the F sharp quite a lot through this, this note. And what I really particularly love, if we zoom in a little bit, what I really love about um, tuning in this way as well is the orange line here shows you what the original note was. Like what Beth was singing originally is that orange, what, is that orange line. So the green line here is what the auto-tune is doing to Beth's vocal. Um, and unlike the other tuning, the real-time tuning, you can actually see what it's doing. So when you're turning that note transition down, you can see it's going closer back. It's going closer back to the original of what Beth sang. And then the more I move that note transition up, you can see how it gets closer to the middle of what key that she's singing in. Um, so if I open that up again, that very first bit, for example, here, she's not quite in that note, but the rest of it, she's she's pretty accurate. She's damn good. So when I tighten that up, it all goes on every note, super clean. Now, again, with the speed, if I do that as well, like you can see, it's absolutely bang on in the middle for all of them. And you can kind of predict that that's gonna sound really robotic because there's no natural movement to the waveform anymore. So let me play what that sounds like. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you died for me. We give you promise if you are honest. So you can hear that is super, super auto-tuned. So generally what I do, um, I mean, these, these settings, when you go onto the default, are pretty accurate. They're pretty, pretty good. They're, they're not too heavy and they're not too little. And you will hear an instant effect. So if I just uh, bring up the default. If you didn't lie to me, tell me you died for me. We give you promise if you are honest. It's pretty good. It all sounds in tune to me. There might be some little bits that either sound overtuned or some bits that maybe aren't quite tuned enough. And the best thing about this, we can then individually go in. So this first bit, for example, I could just tune uh, that one harder. Uh, let me get that speed down just to get that front in. And I'm going to actually just let off a little bit of the note transition just to keep a little bit we, we want a little bit of movement in that line because that's the bit that's that's natural so we can just change that first note if you didn't lie to me. that first note to me now is absolutely bang on it still sounds quite natural if you didn't lie to this is this is what the whole process is about it's about finding the line of um how naturally you can get it sounding but also how how it's particularly in pop music like how bang on you can get that tuning what it's also going to be doing is, is tightening up all the tining, timings because the tighter we go. So, for example, this little section here goes between three notes in one breath. And as she's going down, the tighter we make those, the quicker the transitions, you can see that the timing is going to jump down to that note quicker than it was originally. To me, to and it sounds a little bit unnatural. So if we loosen that off, slow down the speed a little bit, but make sure those lines are all within as best as we can, keeping that shape, but all within the note. If you didn't lie to me, tell so this bottom one for me is sounding a little bit robotic. So if we want to get that first bit up like this, I don't know if we're going to fully, if you didn't lie to me, tell me I don't know if we're going to fully move that. So for me, that second one here is the one that's making it sound robotic. So let's drop that because she's pretty bang in the middle of that note anyway. So sometimes you don't really need any tuning on a note, you can afford to take it off and get it back sounding natural. If you didn't lie to me, tell me. It's better. Still not quite there. And if I remove it too much, look, we're not going to get the tuning. If you didn't lie to me, tell And you can see it's slightly out of tune now. So let's rein that in a little bit more. If you didn't lie to me, tell me. It's better. Still not quite there. So let's play around a little bit with this first one as well. If you didn't lie to me, tell it's better. 
Um, so the more you tweak and the more you can change things like this, um, the better it's gonna sound. The little details really make a big difference in songs like this. So let's hear what it's like a little bit more in context um, with my really bad unmixed plugins. So that bottom note, in all honesty, you can't fully hear it when it's in the mix. You is making me find it. You don't notice it as much as when you're on your own and this is what I mean when you're referencing and going back you've got to just choose um, how far do you want to go in is everything else kind of masking it or if I tune it too hard is it going to kind of make it sound too unnatural how is it sitting amongst everything else now I would personally sit with this for a little bit longer and tune uh, little little moments just make sure it's sounding exactly how I want it to um, I'd spend a little bit more time but ultimately that is the process and you go all the way through um, the whole song doing that now I would also add this to harmonies, I'd add it to everything. Harmonies generally I'd go a little bit harder on the tuning. If you go really hard on it, you can kind of make all your BVs sound like a vocoder, which is a really cool effect that you might want to use without actually owning a vocoder or a plugin for a vocoder. So if you just sing loads of harmonies, tune it really hard, you'll, you'll have that effect and it's a really cool effect that you can definitely use in your pop music. But the best thing it will also do on harmonies is it will tighten them up as well. The timing will be, will be better. And it is very marginal, but it, you'll be surprised how much of a difference it actually makes across the whole of a song when you've got multiple vocals like 10 plus vocals at the same time the s's aren't quite in the same places the notes as you do little runs like those three notes there uh, are all going to be slightly in the wrong time and you and you just get a more tight sound in general if you apply tuning to your harmonies as well so i would definitely recommend playing around with that you can even use tuning on instruments if you want to use it on a sax solo or if maybe you want to use it on a guitar solo and it's not quite tight enough maybe some notes you've not quite hit you can flatten out bends and if you've got bends in your vocal as well so like when a vocal swoops up to a note you can kind of remove a little bit of that as well so there's all sorts of different ways that you can tune and tighten your vocals and as soon as you've got those layered into your mix it's going to sound so much more polished now i want to show you a really quick example of when a vocal slides down to a note it's something that people use and they want to keep into their productions and if you use auto tune it can often remove that so i'm going to show you an example um, and also show you printing again so we're going to print this bit of vocal You heard the slope at the end there. Now, if I play that back straight away without doing anything to it, you'll hear that that's, that, that slide down has, has almost been removed. It's just two separate notes now. Me, you hate so there's no slide there. Now, in some circumstances, this is, this is good. I think that sounds really tight like that. I actually personally prefer that. But say Beth comes back and she's like, I really, I really want that slide back. It adds some character. I'd be like, cool. We're going to do that for you with a bit of tuning. So you want to select these two notes uh, separately. Um, and what we want to be changing is generally two things. The speed. You can see the speed is slowly bringing that back down to the original. Um, and also the transition. So the transition, you can see, adds a bit more of the, the movement, the sort of wobble, the natural wobble in the vocal, like a vibrato. And uh, yeah, use professional terms, George, not wobble. It's vibrato so naturally voices have vibrato the more vibrato that's in there the more natural it sounds um, but also the more vibrato the more difficult it is to tune I'm going to be touching on that in a second as well I want to be finding somewhere in the middle I'd actually say it's more the speed that I want to be changing and let's change this so we're kind of going pretty natural back to back to what the first vocal was okay let's see how that sounds does that add enough of a slope back you hate a little bit, a little bit more. Let's just see if we can get a bit more out of it. What we can also play with here as well is how much of the tuning is actually happening. So that's completely natural again. You hate that sounds that sounds good to me. It sounds in tune. Um, it doesn't necessarily look it, but obviously we're we're working with it here. So you can tighten it a little bit if I wanted to add a bit of that back in. You I think that sounds super tight. I think that sounds great. What I tend to find as well with tuning is that the beginning and ends of notes are generally the most important ones. The ones in the middle, you, you, you can get away with not tuning them quite as hard. But say for example, this top note here, if I just pull that up a little bit on the transition and the speed, just to flatten that out, it's just gonna make sure that that last note is definitely, definitely hitting the mark. Um, so that when it lands onto that that slide, it's 
you just know exactly where you've come from. Generally, if you're about to change section or you're at the end of a phrase and that note is out of tune, nobody listens to the notes before. They only really listen to that last note. That's the one that they remember. So as long as that one's in tune, it kind of gives you a bit more give on the other notes previous to it. Um, same with the beginning note as well. You want that first note to be straight on because that's your first impression for that particular line. And it's insane to think that most people listening to music, if they hear one really bad note in a song, it can ruin the whole song for them. And people do genuinely just remember that one bad note and forget about all the other incredible singing that's in that song. So it's really important to approach tuning um, properly and seriously and treat that as the, the quality of the product that you're gonna be making with the pop music. Okay, so another really cool thing we can do here, um, I don't know if this is gonna particularly work with this example, but let's choose this note up here. And I'm also gonna keep that one the same and bring it down. You can actually change notes of what people are singing. So if you wanted to change a melody or maybe you've re recorded a harmony and you want just one note to be different but you really like the take, you can actually change that with this type of tuning. Me, you, hey, okay, so a little bit, it's a little bit rough. Let's go again. Me, you, hey, I. Me, you, hey, I. You get the idea. You can literally change notes and change the melodies of what people are singing. Beth didn't sing that at all, but with a little bit of work, I could make that sound exactly like that's what she intended to sing. So great little tool there. Really fun little bits you can do to change, change notes in your harmonies or in your main vocal if you're feeling brave enough. So the final thing I want to just very briefly speak to you about, and this is gonna take a lot of experimenting, is vibrato. So in a vocal, Beth, Beth isn't a great example with vibrato. She doesn't use much vibrato in her singing voice. But if you have a singer that does have a lot of vibrato and you're struggling to tune the vocals, what you can actually do is provide a tolerance for vibrato down here at the bottom. So you wanna switch that on. Um, and have a play around, it goes up to 100, it goes down to zero. Have a play around with how much tolerance um, you can give it and how much you can push it. Now what this is doing is actually listening out for the fact that vibrato is gonna be moving the note. It's going very quickly between maybe two notes, three notes, depends how big the vibrato is if I'm being honest. Um, so the computer can often get confused as to which note it's trying to achieve. So like anything with music, once you know that stuff is there and you can have the opportunity to have a play around with it, best thing to do is just to jump in and and do exactly that have a play around with it so the very last thing i want to touch on is how you actually um say your tuning has chosen a wrong note i'm going to use this one as an example up here so say the tuning has tuned it just a little bit too quickly up there and you just think it's a little bit ahead of time and you want to pull that around you can hover here and drag it along to the point that you want that note to change what you can also do if you want to split a note in half and move something to another point, just get your scissor tool, cut that in half, and then you can just drag that second half down. Um, I actually want to listen to that because that looks like it's going to sound awful. <laughs> okay, so there is a good... Let's, let's slow that down. Let's see if we can actually make that sound nice. It's this jump here that's going to sound the worst, I think. Oh, there we go, it looks like quite a natural curve. You wanna get a natural curve to this, this, these bits here. If it's looking like this, you can see that's quite a harsh angle and that's when you get that real auto-tuned sound. So we're aiming to get rid of those as much as possible. If you're the options are endless. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. I hope that you've learned some different techniques. I hope you've got a bit more of an understanding on how tuning works. And I hope maybe you've got a bit more of an understanding on how you can play with tuning, maybe to your advantage as an effect, as something extra in your music. Like I always say, these things are completely subjective. There's no right or wrong way. If somebody thinks your, your vocals are too auto-tuned, but you think they sound sick, then roll with it, own it, don't be afraid. You just want to make sure that you've made that con conscious decision and that you, you aren't over-tuning things if your intention isn't for them to sound tuned. So make sure you have a good ear for things like that. Maybe watch more tutorials. Maybe watch some more examples of people using auto-tune. There's loads of them here on YouTube so you can get lost down that hole. But just make sure everything you do is intentional and I can't stress enough how much attention to little details is gonna make a huge difference to your tuning. That's it for this week. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you have an idea on a tutorial you wanna see, leave them down in the comments below. If you wanna check out some of the music that we are making here at Made On The Road, including Beth's song, you can head to our website, www.madeontheroad.co.uk. Be sure to check out our new course, Building The Life You Want To Live As A Working Musician. 
It's all about helping you create strategies and keep on top of all of your admin and everything else that goes around making music so that you come across professional. You don't end up feeling like you're not getting stuff done and you don't feel like you have a huge list of things that you just never get through. We're here to help you be more productive in your production, making good pop music. And of course, if you wanna to speak to us about your music, head over to the website and get in touch over there. Thanks for watching, stay safe, look after each other and remember, never stop creating. We give you promise, if you were honest, I wouldn't be crazy.